Let's all pray. Thank you, God, for, for sending us water and for all the wonderful things that water does. Thank you for the living water uh, that you bring us. Uh, we need to be refreshed. We need to be uh, awakened this morning. We're missing that extra hour, Lord. Uh, so come now and refresh us and renew us and speak to us in our need. Bless the words of my mouth, the words of meditation in our hearts, and, and this word from Scripture, and take it and make it your living word. We pray in, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> So before I went to Afghanistan to serve as the command chaplain for NATO in 2014 and 15, I had to complete combat readiness training. Uh, chaplains are non-combatants, forbidden to carry or use a weapon. But we still have to accompany troops into uh, dangerous places. And in a place like Afghanistan, uh, any place could be dangerous, at least at that time. I pray for the day when that won't be true. Uh, so, we go through the same combat readiness training as everyone else, minus the weapons part. One of the boxes that you have to check in this training is carrying a simulated wounded person over your shoulder for 50 yards to safety. You're already wearing 30 to 40 pounds of body armor, and so is the other person. So that means carrying a minimum of about 235 to 250 pounds or more as fast as you can go for 50 yards. I couldn't do it. They assigned me the smallest, lightest person they could find for the test. Uh, they, you know, somehow they said, you passed the test. Okay. Uh, I think they were being very generous, if not blind. Because uh, I assure you, it was not very fast. Uh, and it was probably more like I was dragging the person <laughs> uh, than actually carrying them. Uh, but for some reason, they wanted me in Afghanistan, and they still sent me. I spent that year in Afghanistan praying... Uh, among other things, that I would never have to carry a wounded person to safety, that nobody's life would depend on me in a situation like that. And that if it did, God would somehow grant me the strength. You know, the, the adrenaline would just kick in, like those stories about people who somehow find the strength to lift a car you know, off of someone, uh, and that for the sake of, of the person whose life was at stake, I, I would somehow be able to do it. I thank God that I never had to. As we explore what's so amazing about grace as our theme for this Lenten season, this morning we focus on how it is that grace bears all things. And the original Greek word that we translate as to bear in 1 Corinthians 13 uh, literally means to carry. Like in the story in our gospel reading this morning from John 5, where the, the lame or the, or the paralyzed man is lying by the pool, a pool said to have healing properties when the water was stirred by an angel of the Lord, uh, and when Jesus asked this man, do you want to be healed? He tells him, sir, I have no one to carry me. I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And so Jesus becomes the healing pool for him. The living water that we read about in the gospel reading last Sunday uh, with the Samaritan woman at the well in John chapter 4. The water and the spirit that Jesus talked to Nicodemus about in that reading on the first Sunday in Lent from John chapter 3. Jesus tells him, rise up, take your mat and walk, and the man does. And then he gets in trouble for it. The religious authorities say the man is in trouble for carrying his mat on the Sabbath that that is work, 
and that it's not lawful to carry your mat on the Sabbath. That the man is breaking the commandment to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy uh, by doing no work. Or at least that's the religious leader's interpretation of the commandment and the circumstance in which they are choosing to apply it. Which is to then lay another burden on this man to carry when he's just had one burden lifted He's just been healed and raised up and set free. I mean, is this fair? So much to, to carry, so much to bear. I mean, can you just feel the heaviness of it all and, and, and the burden of it all? You know, one's been lifted and here comes another one. The poor man is is paralyzed or disabled such that he needs assistance. He's been lying there day in and day out for 38 years, it says. He needs someone to carry him. Have you been there? He can't do it himself. Any adrenaline rush there might be, you know, it's not enough it's just not happening anymore, you know. He's, he's gone. He's drained. Have you been there? And then when he is finally able, when he can walk and he can carry his mat, he's put down for it. He's judged to be in the wrong for it. He's menaced and threatened for it. And, and the heaviness descends again. And I got to imagine it just crushes him. It's too much to carry. Too much to bear. Can you identify with him? Do you know what that feels like? Have you been there? How does one bear it? What, what is the way that you could say, I have no one to carry me, and I need help? Or, I need someone to carry this, whatever this is. It's too much for me to bear. Well, friends, this is grace, amazing grace, divine love that bears all things, that God's grace and love became flesh in Jesus Christ, the healer, and Jesus carries it. And Jesus carries us by carrying the cross all of our burdens are taken up by Christ and nailed to the cross. And by his wounds we are healed, the apostle writes in 1 Peter, quoting the prophet Isaiah. We are set free. This is grace, amazing grace, divine love that bears all things, that when it feels like we are being crushed by the heaviness of the burden and, and we want to scream and wail and cry out, I have no one to carry me. Christ the healer comes and finds us like Jesus found that man in the temple. I once was lost, but now I'm found. And Christ the healer says to us, as Jesus said to the man in the temple, see, I was blind, but now I see, see, you have been made well. You have been made whole. You have been set free. And do not sin anymore, because even the brokenness of your sin has been carried to the cross and you have been healed. Even the burden of your bondage to sin has been nailed to the cross, and you have been set free. 
This is grace, amazing grace, divine love that bears all things that we have been raised with Christ. Rise up, take your mat, and walk. And don't worry about what anybody else says or the ways anybody tries to put you down. For that's the purpose of the Sabbath and what makes it holy and what makes you whole. As it says in that reading from Deuteronomy this morning, when you were enslaved, and and there are many ways to be enslaved, and there were heavy burdens on you that you could not bear, The Lord your God brought you out from that place with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. By grace you have been saved and salved and healed, it says in that second reading from Romans. Amazing grace. It's a gift from God who loves us unconditionally and especially when we can't. Do it. I grew up in a very dysfunctional and abusive home, and I remember as a little child feeling very broken and trapped, enslaved with no way to escape and no rescue in sight. And yet there was a hope and a wholeness that would literally come upon me in church. In church, I felt lifted up in my heart and soul, even though I was too young to use the language or know what it meant to say heart and soul. Um, It happened when we would come to the part in the service that back then was called the gradual. I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember this, okay? This was in the red book before the green book before the red book, okay? (laughs) You know, anyway... When the majestic words and music of the gradual were played and sung, it was like a resurrection for me. Resurrection light and power would fill me and warm me and hold me and carry me. uh, Carry me through as we sang, cast thy burden upon the Lord and God will sustain thee. I will call upon God and the Lord will save me. God has delivered my soul in peace. Alleluia! Alleluia! And I know we're not supposed to say that during Lent. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Pastor Christine. Uh, <laughs> but every Sunday as a child, when we would come to that part in the service, it was a resurrection. And this story this morning from John 5 is about resurrection power. As a child, cast thy burden upon the Lord. Those were the words I needed to hear and to know that God would carry me through another week. There's one more song I want to share in closing. Uh, When I think about how grace bears all things, I think about uh, these words to a song written by Kathleen Hollingsworth, Some of you remember she was one of the substitute musicians uh, before Joshua came to us, uh, which has been a blessing. (laughs) And and Kathleen's been a blessing to me, a good friend for the eight or nine years that I've known her. And it's like it says in Galatians 6.2 that we are to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the way of Christ. Uh, There have been times when my burden has been too much and Kathleen's been there to help me bear it. And and so have have you as a community of faith during this time of grief at my daughter's death. You have sent my wife and me the most beautiful cards and you have written the most beautiful things in them uh, that touch us deeply. You have brought us flowers and food, and you'll be bringing more food this week and hosting the memorial service on Saturday and the reception after. And and you come up to us and and you ask us, how are you doing? And you look us in the eyes, and I know you mean it. 
and, and you say, we're praying for you, and I know you are, and you hug us, and it means the world to us. You're helping us bear this burden and carrying us through. And that's the name of the song that Kathleen wrote. It's called, Carry Me Through. Only she gives it a little different twist with the image she uses for carrying a person. She uses the image of being carried down a river in an inner tube. It's all about the water and the spirit, the living water, the pool of healing water floating down the river, being carried along by the current. Isn't that a great image for the grace that bears all things and carries us through? So listen to these words in that context of the amazing grace that bears all things. Carry me strong. Carry me sweet. Carry me down that river canyon deep. I want to roll down your rocky river bed because there ain't no crying river when you carry me through. In the heat of the desert, come and lay with me. Restore your serenity. Take a ride. You'll see. When life has a funny way of such madness, every day there ain't no crying river when you carry me through. When the sun's old smile simmers down on me, let the light set fire and dance so free. When the stormy clouds send the raindrops falling down, there ain't no crying river when you carry me through. Carry me strong. Carry me, sweet. Carry me down that river canyon deep. I want to roll down your rocky river bed because there ain't no crying river when you carry me through. The watery, wet grace of God bears all things. The watery, wet grace of God carries us through. Amen.